We react to them as what we are, prisoners of war. We are already prisoners of war. It's just a continuation of the same thing. See, we, we, we have to get out of this mindset of every now and then we're being jerked around in a different way. We've been jerked around every day just by being <laughs> in the system of white supremacy that we are in. It's just a continuous thing. It's one smooth fabric the system of white supremacy. And if you're a person of color, you are subject to that world government. And you don't chop it up into things like America and Europe and all like that. Yeah, let's take all of that out of your mind altogether. There's one government on the planet. It's called, in capital letters, the system of white supremacy. Now, everything that I'm saying now is contestable. But I'm saying I'm sticking with it. Because this is what I found out, not by choice, but by studying everything that was going on around me and everything that I heard other people say, listening to other people, listening to every type of speech, listening to people who had written all kinds of books and whatnot and traveled everywhere, and then keeping my eyes open myself. These are conclusions conclusions that I came to years ago. I have never seen not one iota of evidence to prove otherwise. One government on this planet is called the system of white supremacy. All prisoners of war, and that's what I consider myself to be, logically speaking, if you're a prisoner of war, particularly a war that you didn't have anything to do with starting, but you were considered to be the target of the war, and you were captured down through the generations, and I was born in captivity. Everybody on the planet of color now is born in captivity, all right? You're not in the process of being captive. We were born in captivity according to the evidence of the system of white supremacy. And the system of white supremacy was the war vehicle. All the things that are called wars, it's not really one war according to logic, and that's the war between those who believe in white supremacy and those who don't. And all other so-called wars are nothing but battles within that war. A war is the big picture. A battle is the smaller picture within a war. So you've had lots of battles. World War One, World War Two. these were just battles. And they were turf battles, for the most part, between people who believed in white supremacy, but they were fighting each other about just like gangster operations, which is the system of white supremacy is a gangster operation. They were fighting about who's going to be in charge of the non-white people of the entire planet. That's why I say when you think of white supremacy, you stop thinking about borderlines. To the white supremacists, there's no such thing as a border for them. Borders are for non-white people. You put up fences and whatnot. You put up cells, just like prisoners, like we are. We're shuffled. uh, Non-white people are put on reservations. By whom? By whom? Who has the power to put somebody on a reservation? The white supremacists. It's always them. They're the usual suspects every time, even when it doesn't look like it on the surface. Who has the power to cause people to come out of what they call their homeland and go saying they're looking for a job somewhere in a distant place that they have never been, just heard of, turning over in boats with their babies in their arms, falling into the sea, and... Somebody white, come and fish them out, dry them off, take them to some holding place like prisoners of war, or put up a fence like prisoners of war, or put up a wall like prisoners of war. See, when you see yourself the way that you really are on this planet, then you act accordingly in answer to the question. You try to dismantle that prison. I say dismantle the prison because you can't escape the prison. There's no such thing as I'm going to find a place where this prison doesn't exist. I'm going to get me a plot of land somewhere. 
It's no place on this planet that the white supremacists don't have access to and dominion over. Even before you get there or even in the process of getting there, if there was such a place, they would have to take you there because you don't know where the place is. If you're a person of color, unless you're already there or have been there, but you got there because the white supremacists permitted you to be there. So if they permit you to be in a cell block, which is all that island will be, all that piece of land will be, wherever it is, it's just another part of their cell block since they own the whole planet, or you might say possess it. They don't have legitimate ownership because nobody has legitimate ownership of the whole planet. But we are illegitimate prisoners of war as a black person. You're born in prison, and the entire planet is a prison because the white supremacist has made it so if you have color in your skin. So you always try to dismantle that prison. That's why I wrote the book that I wrote, because I try, I'm trying to design how do you go about as an individual dismantling the prison. That's the answer that I know of. I don't know of no other answer. There's no way to break out of the prison. You have to dismantle it and replace it with what? Because the prison is really a system, a system of white supremacy. So you replace white supremacy with what? Black supremacy? No. That would just be the same old thing. I mean, just going around chasing in a circle. You have black supremacy for a while, then white supremacy for a while, then black supremacy for a while, and which is, consists of what? Nothing but mistreating people. And you don't want any more of that. We need to break out of that cycle. So what we should have is universal man, universal woman, and a brand new perspective of how the universe is supposed to be treated and how every creature and everything in it, including all the environment, should be treated. Universal man, universal woman. That's the way to go. But we need a code for doing it. That is what the missing link, in my opinion, 